Okay, we're going to get started. Welcome, everybody. We are uh, holding now on Torah Chav Beis in the Kutim Aran Chelik Aleph, Lesson 22. And uh, we're coming up to the fifth section, which is page 340 in this book, which is the third volume of this book. Let's get a bit of a uh, of a bearing of where we're at. So we said uh, we said from the beginning we're talking about these two seals, and these two seals represent the way that that when when Hashem sends something into the world because we need a wake up call, we need to learn a lesson, we need to change something about the way that we're living. So it comes down into the world as din, judgment. And there's two places where we can contain that din and judgment and sweeten that judgment. The first is that the tzaddikim know this, this din that's coming into the world, this gizar din that's coming into the world, and they understand what it is, and they can give us, they can, they can give us the musr that we need in order to, to step up and to change and to, to get back on track. That's the first seal. And the second seal is, is that we have to be able to receive it from them. We have to have a munas chachamim. We have to be connected to them in order so that we can, we, can, we can accomplish that which they're telling us to do and hold back that din and really get back onto the track of where we're supposed to be. That's the way I understand it. Um, so we then said last week, we said that... Um, Yeah, we said that we have to connect to the Shiva Rohim, the, the seven shepherds of the Jewish people, in order to accomplish this. Those are the tzaddikim. They represent the tzaddikim. The seven shepherds, of course, are Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, um, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, and David. And, um, and they represent the tzaddikim, the Talmud Chamim, in the generations that help us, that give us the Musar, give us the... You know, you go to see a tzaddik and you ask for, for advice and they tell you, you should do this. That's our, our connection. Or when they're speaking to the whole generation and telling us what we need to, what we need to do. If we listen to them and we, we have a muna, it's those seven shepherds that are going to help us to, to get on track. But it's not so easy because we have tzaddikim and then we have people in the generation who are the opposite and who show up as leaders and try to convince us to, to follow them, but really they're, they're full of evil. And, and they're false leaders, and they're, they're going to tear us down into the world of, of, of Tuma and negativity. So, last thing Rabbi Nachman said last week was in order to be able to not be pulled in by their brazenness, we have to activate our own brazenness of holiness our Azus de Kedusha. We have to be brazen in our holiness. We have to go for it. We have to be strong. And the way that we develop that brazenness is through our voice, through our call. And it's the voice of Tsa'aka screaming out to Hashem, Anacha, of groaning, Shofar, the Shofar, Chol Zimra singing praises to Hashem. All of these are called Azus de Kedusha, holy brazenness. That's where we finished off last time. Okay, we'll start at hey. That's where we're going to start. Okay, so we said like this. <coughs> we might be overlapping a little bit from last year, but every person has to have tremendous mercy on their own body. And we have to allow everything that our neshama sees, all of the holiness that our souls see in the world, we have to allow that to be attached to our bodies also. I'll explain this in a second. That our body should also understand what our soul feels. The Pasuk says that, that you should not hide, it's, it's, it's speaking about relatives, meaning that you shouldn't hide this from your relatives. But Rabbi Nachman says, it's really on a deeper level, it's referring to this idea that you shouldn't, your, soul, your body should not be blocked off from the spiritual existence of your soul. Your body should also be connected to the spiritual existence that your soul is, is connected to. Don't 
hide yourself. Don't st- don't don't ignore the the your, your body. Make sure you have rachmanus in your body to make sure it feels holiness. Hi nubsar gufucha. Like this, we always have that our 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 soul experiences spiritual enlightenment, and the less sensitive we are to that, the the more non-holy, let's say, our body is. <laughs> Meaning like this, we're walking, in a, walking around in a world where when you meet another person, you're meeting another holy soul, a holy neshama, a a piece of eternity. And unfortunately, we're, we're so messed up because of our existence in Olam Hazen and Gullus that we rarely, some of us anyway, well, we rarely think of that person as a spiritual entity, right? But really, we know there's no such thing as chance and happenstance in the world. We know that Hashem puts people together, and often, often people are put together because they have past life things that they have to resolve. They used to be together in a different existence, and they come together again. And if we were in tune, we would realize that when I meet this new person, there's something very big between us. There's something amazing that we need to accomplish together, right? That's what I should be thinking. That's what I would be thinking. If I was aware of what my soul experience is. My soul at the highest level is like looking down on me and saying, Hey, no, wake up. You see what's happening over here? Why aren't you, why aren't you on, with, with the program, right? That's what my soul is doing. So Rabbi Nachman is saying, it's not fair. <laughs> we have to have Rachmanis on our bodies. We have to have, have mercy on ourselves. And make sure that we do whatever we can to allow our body to experience that which our soul is experiencing. There needs to be, there's a famous old jazz song called Body and Soul, but there needs to be a connection between body and soul. You with me? Yeah? We have to be very careful with our body to make sure, to see to it that we purify it. In, in order so that we should be able to, it should be able to know all these things that our soul understands and feels and grasps. Our soul, says Rabbi Nachman, is always seeing tremendously lofty things. It's seeing supernal existences and, and malachim and all these things that are going on in the world. Right? And we don't see it. But our body doesn't know, doesn't experience it, doesn't see it. Every person has to have tremendous rachmanis, mercy on the flesh of our body. To see to it that we can purify our body. Until our neshama is able to tell over to it, to give over to, to our body everything that it's seeing all the time. If you ever wanted, by the way, if anybody struggles with, uh, with uh, taiva saguf, um, physical desires of the body, right? Yeah, everyone has their physical desires. Food and lust and, and laziness, sleep, whatever it is, right? So we always think in our minds, you know, I, uh, I, need, to, let's say, I need to lose weight. I need to be healthier. And we have, we have our reasons. And some of the reasons are really good reasons. I want to be healthy so I can see my grandchildren and their wedding, whatever you have, right? Everyone has good reasons. But we never thought about this reason until Rabbi Nachman told us, right? That if we really work on, forget, forget the, the, the way our body looks. If we would really work on, on distancing ourselves from those, from those taivas, those, those, those physical pleasures that are not beneficial to me, not only would I be healthier, but I would be actually more able to feel my spiritual existence, to feel my soul, to feel the spirituality that's occurring all around me. But it's Kozman that I'm connected so strongly to my body and to all of its desires, it's like I'm, I'm making a blockage between my body and soul and I'm not feeling it. So this is serious inspiration for us to, 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 be, to be more careful to, to, to get, get away from physical desires that are not healthy and to stop it. Not only are we going to feel better physically, but we're going to connect to the highest levels of our existence. 
When the body is in this in this state, he It's a tremendous it's like a gift to the soul. Meaning, when the body gets holy and is able to experience that that which the soul experiences, because sometimes the soul is going to fall from its level. And when the body is pure and illuminated, then the soul is going to be able to use that body, that holy body, as a way to lift itself back up. Meaning, we normally think that the soul is the highest thing. Right? And for everyone it is. <laughs> right? And that the body pulls us down. But he's saying that if we are able to raise our body up and to have, have more of a... Of a of a, of a of a equanimity, I guess, between the the body and the soul. Then, if we have a spiritual yurida, a spiritual fall, that body is going to be able to pull the soul back up. It's going to be a tremendous tova. Of, of, it's like a favor, like a good thing for 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 the soul. Through the pleasures that the body has felt, presumably those those positive spiritual pleasures that the body has felt, the soul is going to be able to return to its state of spiritual pleasure. Because what now that the body is good and it's it's holy and it's kosher, it's not it's no longer trapped and held down by those body pleasures. So through this, the soul is going to be able to jump back up to the place where it used to be, to its level, to its pleasures. So another piece of inspiration. Usually we think that the body is pulling down the, the, the soul. So we say, if we really work on this and we, we, we remove ourselves from unhealthy connection to physicality and materialism, so our body is going to be able to, to pull us up when we slide down. But not only that, um, um, our body is going to be like, like, like a ground... Sorry, not only are we going to feel and sense spiritual things in the world and have more of a connection to the spiritual, to the spiritual in the world, but our body is going to be a source of strength for the soul. Amazing. And also, not only that, through the remnants... The, 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 the imprints that are left in our body when, when, when the soul is able to illuminate into the body that, that spiritual essence leaves an imprint in the body leaves like a residue let's call it I don't know I'm making up words here it leaves it leaves something there it leaves a trace there right through that it's going to also be able to, to, to raise that back to its level this is like we said before, we said that, we went through this last week, I'm repeating, sorry guys. That, that through my flesh, I can, I can see, I can behold Hashem. Right? So we said, what does it mean? Usually this Pasuk means that, that I, can, I can understand Hashem through, through, through my body. Right, and I can see through the spheres and whatever. I can, you know, this, the the Kabbalistic spheres are a layout according to the body. So he's saying here's a different way to see it. Not not only that, but if I'm able to elevate my body to such a spiritual state and to detach from 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 unhealthy physicality, my body is going to help me to to see spirituality, to see, see ruchnis, to see Hashem in the world. Totally amazing. Through, actually, through my flesh, being holy, I'll be able to see Hashem. Attaining godliness. The, the person himself, from his body, will be able to see and behold tremendous um, um, perceptions of godliness. This is the Neshama always sees. But when the body has brazenness, the bad kind, like we said from that passage, that the, the dogs are brazen souls. Then the body, sorry, the soul is not able to become close to the body and able to, to give over to it this spiritual world that the, that the soul lives in. We become like dogs if we just eat all the time and we give in to all our bodily functions. We're like an animal. That's what we are. We're like dogs. Give me, give me this. Give me that. Ice cream. 
right? I don't know, potato chips, right? Physical, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say. <laughs> Bad things, right? If I'm always grasping after these things, I'm like a dog. The Zora Cutter says that the dog, dogs always are screaming, hav, hav, give me, give me, right? That's what a dog is like. So the Kalavim Azei Nefesh, like the Pasuk says, hey, then we're not going to have this connection to our soul. Our body will not connect to our soul. Because it's gonna, it will be, it could get caught and stuck in this, this, this strength and and brazenness of the body. When the goof is very, the body is very powerfully associated with physical desires. We need for this tremendous holy brazenness to counter the brazenness of the body. We need holy brazenness. This is the voices that we, we talked about. The voice of uh, This is what breaks the azus of the body. It breaks the boldness of the body. Because it's the groaning and crying out to Hashem that breaks the body of a person. Like the, the says the Gemara. We can break the boldness and the power of the body. Then the neshama is able to draw itself close to the body. Because there's nothing to worry about. So once again, we, we use the power of our voice to cry out to Hashem. And that brazen crying out to Hashem, like for real, we go somewhere, we, we get away from everybody, whatever it is, if it's outdoors, if it's indoors. And we cry to Hashem with a loud voice. We use our voice with power. To scream to Hashem. That breaks something in us. It really does. Most of the time, we go through our lives and we don't say a word to Hashem. And if we do, it's whispery, whispery, whispery. Imagine what happens when we, when we open up our, our whole existence and we, we go somewhere and we scream to Hashem at the top of our lungs. Right? That's really taking something from inside. That's really opening up. And that's really breaking all of those things that are always holding me back. Those, the, the control that my body has over my soul. It's going to wipe it out and break it down. It's these aspects of the world that cause us to always be quiet and timid and to think we have to, we have to be a certain way that people see me and, and I, have to, I have to be more guarded and I can't, I can't show people that I, what's really going on inside, which sometimes you can't, right? It's not always good to be open to everybody. <laughs> we have to, right? But when I can go and speak to Hashem and really, really use my voice, kol anacha, kol tsa'aka, the voice of screaming and crying out to Hashem, and I can open that up, oh, now the real me comes out a little bit. Now I can really say what I'm thinking and say what I mean to Hashem. That is breaking this whole existence. It's breaking what I'm calling the body. Our body's existence in the world. And when we do that, yeah, I said that already. This is the new part now. <laughs> this is what the Pasuk means in Tehillim. The Pasuk in Tehillim says, Mikol Anchasi, from, from the, the, the sound of my sighing, the voice of my sighing, Voice of my groaning, Dovka Atzmi Lebesari. So the direct translation of this is: My bone has clung, clinged to my flesh. Clung, he says. Okay, that's what the pasuk means. That's it. Through my crying, my sighing, the vo- through the sound of my sighing, my bone has clinged to my flesh. Clung to my flesh. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean on a simple level. Sorry, but let's see what Rabbi Nachman says. Atzmi, so, so atzmi is, what, is the word etzim in Hebrew means bone. Okay, but it has a lot of meaning, this word etzim, a lot of meaning to it. Etzim means bone. But atzmi, which means my bone, also means me. Ani atzmi, me myself. Atzmi means, means me also. Right? So he says, says Rabbi Nachman, atzmi, he a neshama. Atzmi means my neshama, it means my soul. Shehi etzim ha'adam. That is the essence of a person. That's what a person is, is their neshama. Ki ikr atzmius ha'adam. The main, 
let's call it, let's say, essence of a person. This, that a person says, I. Right? When I say I, who am I talking to? Who am I talking about? Yourself. Am I talking about, am I talking about my uh, fabulously handsome beard? <laughs> what do I mean? Do I mean my, 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 my face? Do I mean my fingers? Do I mean, okay, you want to say my whole body? Is that what I mean? Yeah. So you know, that's interestingly actually. Our buddy uh, Jonah, Simcha, Jonah Simcha Muscat Brown. The other day he was giving a shear. He said something that that really talks about this. He said, you know, a person says if you point to yourself. Remember this? If you point to yourself. You got to, everyone points to themselves and everyone points to their heart. So he says, that's you. That's you. That's you. You're your heart. What happens if you? Uh, your heart stops working and you have to get a heart transplant. You take someone else's heart. So who is it? Right? Any part of your body can be amputated or reattached or transplanted. Right? So who are you? Maybe the closest we could say is our brain. He didn't say it like this, but this is my take on it. The, the, we say, we say in, um, in there's a shame you could, we say before putting on tefillin. And when we say this, we say, um, a neshama shebemoichi, the neshama that is in my brain, meaning that the brain, the, the svarim say, the brain is the seat of the neshama, is where the neshama rests, whatever that means. Right? So maybe that's the closest thing we could say, is the me. But when we say me, I don't mean this. Right? Another way to look at this, this is a very, this is a very deep way to, uh, in meditation, and also in, um, you can use this in his body also, but meditation, one of the steps in meditation is to, is to try to be aware of your, your internal existence, right? So let me give you an example. If you have a physical pain, you say, ow, my hand hurts, right? So the you is recognizing that there's a pain in your hand, right? But the you... The you was there before the pain was there. The you is there after the pain is there. The you is always there. The me, the ani, is always there. And as things happen in my life, as I experience things, they come up and they go down. They, go, they come and they go away. But there's an unchanging essence of me that's always there, that witnesses all of these experiences that I have and all these feelings that I have. But it's not the feelings. Right? I am not my feelings. I am not my thoughts. I am not my pain. Right? It's a tremendous, tremendous uh, idea in meditation. Very good to help people with difficulties that they have. That's a type of therapy, really. Right? What, I'm, what am I trying to say here? The me, the, the ani, is something that is not attached to anything at all. And it's there. It's always there. Right? No matter what's going on. And if my head hurts, if I have a headache, my brain hurts, right? It's not, it's not, it's not the, the soul that hurts. It's, it's, the, it's the soul that's experiencing and witnessing the, the pain that's in my head. You hear what I'm saying? I hope this isn't too weird for everybody. <laughs> what I'm trying to say and get at is that there's an ani that is not any part of my body. It's not anything to do with my physical existence. That ani atzmi me. My essence is my neshama. When I say ani, says Rabbi Nachman, that's referring to my soul. Shehi etzem hakayam laad. It's my it's my eternal. He's saying the words here. It's my it's my eternal, unchanging essence. It's always there. Remember when you were a little kid, when you were just a little kid, you had an eye that experienced everything, and and that was growing up, and that same eye is still is still there now. It's the same one who experiences everything in the world and witnesses everything that happens. It's the same thing. It's the same existence. It's always there. It was there before you were born. It's in your life and it will be there after. That's the neshama. That's the I. Okay. Sorry. That was a bit of a tangerine there. But because of the boldness of the body and its, its, its desires. It's, I want a, a worse word for, for taivas, for desires. <laughs> It's uh, like a negative word for that. It's what? Lusts. lusts. It's lusts. 
Very good. Azai Hanashama, then the Nashama, she etzema adam, which is the essence of a person. Rechoika mi besarai is distance, distances itself from the flesh and the body. But, but through the voice of my crying out, of my groaning and moaning to Hashem, which is me activating my brazenness of holiness, my holy brazenness, that's how I break the power of my body. Then what happens is the, the etzem, the soul, becomes close to and attached to and clings to the body, the flesh. Which means the soul to the body. And now you can see that Pasuk that we said from Tehillim. Mikol and Chasi, from the voice of my crying out, Dovka Atzmi Lebesari. My soul clings to my body. Right? What an awesome, awesome Rabbi Nachman on this Pasuk. <laughs> no one ever thought about this before. This is amazing. So now, okay, so everybody with me? This is how we're, we're, we're on this pathway to attach ourselves to the great tzaddikim. Right? And be connected to the tzaddikim. And we said, the problem is, is that there's the other people in the generation who, who are brazen-faced dogs who, who try to look like leaders in tzaddikim, but really, they're the opposite. And we can get pulled in by them. How do we stop being connected to them? How do we know, how do we stay far away from these types of people? Is when we activate our own holy brazenness. And that our own holy brazenness will attach us to those tzaddikim, will attach us to those tzaddikim, and on a personal level, it will attach our soul to our body. Right? It will essentially keep us attached to holiness. You hear this? This is what it does. Screaming to Hashem. Okay. Ubechinas. Now we're going to take this to another aspect. What is the other thing that we use to activate our holiness through a sound? Chaim. Shofar. Shofar, right? That's the thing that we blow. And when do we blow it? What's the Torah all about? Is that time of din, of judgment, and sweetening the judgment. This is the whole purpose of the shofar. Right? When we have these judgments coming in, we blow the shofar, specifically on Rosh Hashanah, in order to sweeten the judgments and wake us up, right? So, let's see, what, let's see where this is going. It's something we never thought of. Totally, it's going to be amazing. kol hu mikol and chasi. And, this, uh, this thing that we do, that we blow the shofar, the voices, the sounds of the shofar, is this aspect of my own voice crying out to Hashem. My own... The, the voice of my, of, my, of my groaning to Hashem. And it breaks the body of a person. Like the Pasuk says in Amos, A rhetorical question. Is it possible that the shofar could blow in a city and the, the people would not be frightened? Right? Meaning, it's a power. Uh, it's a brazen power. The, the tekiah of the shofar. It's a brazen power. You have to, in order to really understand this, you have to step back for a second. I know we mentioned this in previous classes that talked about the shofar. But it used to be in the old days, the old, old days, that when, when there was a war, there was such a thing as a battle cry. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I don't think we do this anymore. I'm not uh, up on the latest war tactics. But, but I don't know if they have some kind of cry. But, but they would line up and get ready to fight. And then they would pull out mamish a big a horn, a ram's horn, a whatever, and they would blow it, and that would be like into battle. So can you imagine if you're you're you know you're sleeping in your little shtetl in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden you hear the sound of a horn being sounded, right? It'd be keilu to to, to associate it with our time. Imagine you're sleeping in your house right now. And all of a sudden, you start to hear a ton of gunshots outside, right? You'd be, you'd be frightened. That sound of the shofar is bold. It's azus. It's boldness. It's brazenness. Yeah? With me? Valyadam, yuchal, lavoy, laroyim. And it's through them that we're able, it's through the shofar that we're able to connect to our holy shepherds. Tzadikim. How do we see this? 
זה בחינס תקיה שברים תרועה. Everybody knows by Rosh Hashanah when we blow the shofar, the guy calls out. If you're Lubavitchers, no one calls out. But for everybody else, there's a guy who calls out and says tekiya, and the, and the, the Baal Tekiya blows the shofar at tekiya. Tekiya is the long, smooth sound. Du, shvarim, du, 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 terua. Du, 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 right? Those are the three main sounds of the shofar. And there's combinations. Tekiya, shvarim, terua. Okay. Tekiya, hema koilois, kol oiz. The tekiya. That, that big long sound, that's called a kol oiz. That's called the voice of boldness, of brazenness. Like that battle cry. Right? So that's the, that's the brazenness, is the tekiah. Shvarim, what does the word shvarim mean? Means, sha'al yadam nishbar azaz aguf. Shvarim means, means to break, to be broken. Shvarim. Break. That's what breaks the boldness of the body. And trua, what does the word trua come? What, what's the, what's the, what do we see at the, at the root of the word trua? Is you have the, the letters, resh, ayin, probably hey. Right? And what is that the root of? Trua bechinas ve'ata tir e es ami. You will shepherd your people. That is the, the root of the word for the shepherds. So tekia is the bold blast. Shvarim breaks the body. And trua is the same word as shepherds, those shepherds that we want to connect to, the holy shepherds of the Jewish people. Va'ata tira asami, shehem haroyim de kedusha. They are the shepherds of holiness, the holy shepherds. She efshal is karev lehem. We can't, we, ki im ayyadei azus de kedusha. The only way we can connect to them is through the azus of the azus de kedusha, the holy brazenness. Bechinas kol shofar, which is exactly what we see in the shofar. In other words, Rabbi Nachman told us, If you want to make sure that you can connect to the holy people, and by the way, connect your body to your soul, what do we have to do? We have to, in the face of those brazen dog face leaders who tried to trip us up, we have to activate our own power. We have to have oiz, we have to have, have azus de kedusha. And how do we do that? With our voices, with the voice of our crying out. And through the voice of our crying out, we will break The, 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 the grip that our body has on our soul and through that we'll be able to connect to the holy people of the generation to the tzaddikim which are the shepherds says Rabbi Nachman this is exactly what the, what the, what the sounds of the shefer are tekia is brazen blast shvarim is breaking the body and trua is the shepherds right it's right there in the words and it's like so obvious you could never think of the shefer without thinking about this now in the future This is just what, what, what breaks our, what, what brings us closer to the tzaddikim. And this is also what we see that uh, Pasuk says in Bereshis, Vayomal es besar or lasam be'etzem hayom hazeh. And they, they circumcise the flesh of their bodies on that day. Be'etzem hayom hazeh. On the, in the, that very day, okay? Uksiv Shav, and it also says, uh, says over there, Be'etzem hayom hazeh nimol avraham. And on that very day, Be'etzem Hayem Hazeh, Avram Avinu was circumcised. So Hayem Hazeh, this day, Zeh Bechinas Kol Shofar. This is referring to the Shofar. How do we see such a thing? Shemitzvah Seh Bayoim. Rosh Hashanah tells us that the, the, one of the special aspects of the mitzvah of Shofar is that it has to be during the daytime. And that the, it's blown on that day. I believe it's also in the Pasuk of the He doesn't bring it down over here. I believe it's also in the Pasuk of the Shofar that it's, it's referring to the day. Hayom is, is the mitzvah of Shofar. Bebechinas, so, Shemitzvah Sebeyom, Bebechinas, Ya'ancha Hashem Beyom Tzorah. Like the Tehillim says, we had this Tehillim in the last one, the last Torah, Torah 21. This, the, this, this, this uh, Tehillim that David HaMelech wrote that talks about Ya'ancha Hashem Beyom Hazeh, that, that, that your... God will answer you on the day of your stress. Hashem will answer you on the day of your tsar, of your stress. That's the, that's the Tehillim of that, that, that has the 70 screams of the woman who's giving birth to the child. Right? And it's through her crying out and screaming that the, 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 the new soul is able to come into the world. You remember this? This is just the last, the last Torah we learned. 
that crying out and screaming of the woman that is what that what that tehillim tehillim chaf ya'ancha Hashem is all about right is, is talking about bayayim tzara that same thing it's on that day shal yadoi nimol v'nishbar orlas basar umakabal or hatsem it's through this it's through this process once again of the crying out to Hashem with, our, with the voice of our boldness and our brazenness that we're able to break the blockages the orla right in other words what does a circumcision do in a spiritual way the foreskin represents a spiritual blockage right kolzman that a baby has this spiritual blockage it can't be it can't it can't be really Jewish let's say even though someone who didn't, uh, there's plenty of people from Russia in the last few generations who weren't able to get circumcised. Yeah, they're still Jewish. But it's, it's like, it's in the top, top, top things that, that need to happen. And they, they, they have to get circumcised as an adult, right? But it represents a spiritual blockage. We can't experience Shabbos with this. It says right in our Musaf Tefillahs, Kol Ha'arilim lo People who, who, who have this blockage cannot dwell in Shabbos. We can't experience Pesach with this also. It's just, it, it doesn't work. It's a spiritual blockage. When we remove that blockage, then the light comes in. This is what he says over here. Al yidei shal yadoi nimol v'nishbar orla sapasar through this, through the crying out and, and releasing of our boldness, of holiness, the, 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 that foreskin is broken and circumcised. And what happens after that? Umakabel or ha'etzem. Then we can receive the light of the etzem. What's the etzem? Is the essence, the soul. Our body can be connected to our soul. How many times do we think, Chevra, I wish I could see with spiritual clarity. I wish I could feel when something's right and when something's not right. Our soul can tell. When our soul goes into a place that's not right, that's, that's, that's spiritually impure, that's going to cause us problems, our soul is up there telling us, don't do it, don't, don't do it. Our soul knows. And if we're in touch with that soul, we can feel, we can be guided, we can understand more. Yeah, right. We can, under, we can, we, we can, we can, we can understand what we have to do. We can, see, we can feel when something's not right for us. We just talked about this I think last, last week, not this, not this week, last week, in The Lost Princess, in our recap, that there's a certain aspect, right? I think he quoted Rav Soloveitchik, that he called it the Jewish tremor, right? There's certain, there's certain things that when things aren't clear, it's not clear what's right and wrong. There's, a, there's an aspect to our existence that, that we have a sense of what's right and wrong, but it's only if we're connected to the princess. Of course, the etzem we're talking about, the neshama, is the princess in this, right? Obviously, I didn't have to say it. But don't we want this? He's telling us what we have to do over here. I, everything that he says, he tells us so many times. Rabbi Nachman tells us so many times. Go out and do his baitadus. Talk to Hashem. Use your voice. Use your voice. He says so many times. So I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm not asking you to answer, but I'm asking you to ask yourself. Have you done it? Do you do it? Do you go and scream to Hashem? Yeah? And, and, and the more we do it on a regular basis, it changes us. And then we go, sometimes we can, we can feel things that we never felt before in our lives. Sometimes we realize we're on a different plane than we were in the past. Right? And then we fall down and we don't feel it anymore. And it's all part of our process. It's all part of our aliyahs and yeridas. Right? But we got to keep going. When we feel ourselves disconnected, He's telling us, what do you got to do? Go and scream and cry to Hashem. Okay. Rant over. V'chein. Is that where we are? V'chein Baklalius. Also, in the big picture, general, general view. Klalius b'nei adam. Yish b'chinas etzem and basar. Okay. So we said two things so far. We have etzem and basar. Um, essence to Flesh represents our connection to, to tzaddikim. They, the tzaddikim are the, I think he's going to say this now, the tzaddikim are like the soul and we're like the body. So too, our soul and our body, it's the same parallel situation that's going on. Right? The true 
tzaddik, sage, wise person. Shehu bechinas haneshama la'am. He is this the, the aspect of the soul to the nation. Right? Shehem lamata mimeno that they are we we're all below him. Hu bechinas etzem. He is this the aspect of the of like the soul of the entire Jewish people. Va'am hem negdo bechinas basar and the nation corresponding to him are like the are like the body. Right? And if you realize what's happening here, this is exactly the way we started off about the seal within the seal. When this din comes into the world, the first place where it's sweetened and where it's contained is by the tzaddik. And then the second place is by the nation. Right? So he's, telling, he's, he's, he's showing us now, how, how are we going to do this? We have to be connected to the tzaddik. We have to be able to have the relationship in order for this to work. And when we are, the nation is, is attached to him like flesh, like basar baguf, like the, like the flesh of the body is attached mm-hmm. to the bone of a person, or like the, like the flesh of the body is attached to the soul of the person. Then they are going to hear the voice of, of, of the crying out. We hear the voice of the sighing. Hainu, koilo shalachachem. We hear the voice of the tzaddik. V'shoiveres gufam. And now that's going to break our... I'm saying this, in, this is not what he's saying. That's going to break our issues. <laughs> it's going to break down our pshtus, our silliness. Right? He says, that's going to break our bodies. V'bechinas anacha shoiveres. Like we said, it's the crying out and the screaming that breaks the bodies, Right? Then he's going to be able to be close to us and attached to us. The flesh to, his, to him, the soul. Like that Pasuk we said in Tehillim. That from the voice of my crying out, my bone is, 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 clings to my flesh, whatever that means. My etzem, my, my soul clings to my body. The etzem, the tzaddik, is like the soul to the entire Jewish people. Ah! But when we're not being like this, we're not this flesh that corresponds to the soul. We don't hear the voice of the tzaddik crying out. Okay? And even if we do hear his voice, rather, we hear it as an echo. We don't hear the voice of the tzaddik. Rather, we hear an echo. This is going to be tremendously powerful, in my opinion. This next part, it's short. It's short, but let, let, let's prepare. Well, first of all, what's the sound of an echo? Everybody knows, I'm not uh, asking something crazy over here. An echo means you, you yell something out, and it bounces off another surface, and like a separate voice comes back to you. That's what an echo is, right? No one's going to fight me on that. Okay. The <laughs> kol havarahu, and the echo that we're talking about here is like this. Da, no. He kashinis oyer kol kedusha, that when the sound of holiness is aroused, azay mis oyer imenu kol sitrachra. Something else happens. The voice of the evil side also rises up. We know there's always balance happening. And when, when, when a power of, of holiness comes up, a power of Sitrach or of Tumah, of the dark side, comes up at the same time, right? So when a tremendous voice of holiness is lifted up, the Sitrach, the evil side, raises up a voice also. Because it's through our Averis that we create these, um, these destructive spiritual forces. You know, someone might, might say Mechablin, you translate as demons. I'm saying destructive spiritual forces. Vehem Tsoyakim and they scream. What do they scream? Havlan Mazoini, Havlan Chayai. This is what the uh, this is what the Zohar Kodesh says. They scream, give me my sustenance, give me food, give me life. Ukeshain Misgaber and Misoir Kol Hakadusha, Kol de Kadusha, Hem Nachim. And and if the the power of the voice of Kadusha of holiness is not raising up in the world, those Dog voices chill out. The voice, the, the voices of the evil side chill out. Why? Because they got nothing to fight against. They're not so worried, right? Ah, teichef 
Shemis Orer Kol called the Kedusha, but right away, as soon as the voice of Kedusha starts rising up, Heim Mis Orim Techav, they start waking up. Umaschilim Litzaik with a Katrig Negde, and they start to scream and to prosecute against a petition against against him. Vizehu Kol Hahavara. This is the echo. Shayotse Mikol di Kedusha that comes out from the voice of Kedusha. In other words, he's saying like this. If we're really plugged in and connected to, to holy people, we're connected to the tzaddik, let's say. We're connected to the tzaddik. So then we will hear from the tzaddik. We'll get messages, inspiration, musr, what we need from the tzaddik. We'll hear his voice. But if we're not connected, if, we're not, if we don't have that relationship with the tzaddik, and rather we're, we're very much stuck and connected to, our, to, 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 the phys- to the physical world and to everything that goes along with it, right? That means all of our stresses and all of our pursuits in the world. If, if that's where we're living and we're not living connected to the tzaddik, so then we're disconnected. So we're still going to hear something, but you know what it's going to be. We're not going to hear the, the, the musr, the beautiful words from the tzaddik, we're going to hear all of the uproar against the tzaddik that comes from the other side. We're going to be filled with hearing negativity and, and uh, dispute and anger. And particularly, I believe this is what he's saying over here, against the tzaddikim. This is something that we see all the time. You know, if you look in Jewish history, whenever you have the biggest tzaddikim, there is always, always, always tremendous machlikas against them. And you don't have to go back very far. I mean, sorry, you don't have to go from the beginning very far. We can go back very far, <laughs> right? And we see, we see this all over the place. We see, I'm going to say, by Cain and Hevel, by Cain and Abel, right? Ka- uh, Hevel became a big tzaddik and really developed his relationship to Hashem. And what did Hevel say? No way. Not on my watch. And he killed him. We see that Noach. Noah was a big tzaddik and he was Hashem was telling him he, Hashem was speaking to him he heard what Hashem said and he was building the teva and what happened the whole generation was making fun of him and was against him and was, was, was like you know probably carrying picket signs around and down with Noah I don't know whatever they were doing but, but right everywhere you go keep looking keep going Moshe Rabbeinu I mean you could go back to all the other ones all the, all the shvatim but Moshe Rabbeinu he came up Everybody saw that, that, that Hashem gave the Torah through him. Like, he was the leader, took everybody out of Egypt, and still, Korach, Korach Vadasai, Korach and all his Hevra, stood up to pull him down. Right? Like, how much clearer does it need to be? Everywhere you go, you're going to keep going, you're going to keep going, and you're going to see Rabbi Nachman, right? Tremendous power of Kedusha, the Baal Shem Tov, before him. Tremendous power of, of holiness. The Rambam, the Rambam. Everybody knows the Rambam nowadays, right? You can't learn halacha without the Rambam. You can't learn Gemara without the Rambam, right? Is, the Rambam is just is, is, is universally agreed upon, except for one of his books, right? But in his time, his books were burned. His books were burned. The Ramchal, the holy Ramchal, who wrote Der Hashem, Mesilis Yasharim, and who wrote... A, a gigantic amount of other Kabbalistic sarim. This is someone who now, in the yeshiva world, they learn his musr, and in the Kabbalistic world, they learn his Kabbalah, universally accepted. He was literally banished from Italy, where he was. Banished from Italy. You're going to always see that there's going to be machlekes and anger corresponding to the level of light of the tzaddikim that come out. Right? So how do you know, how do you know which, which side to be on? Is it the, these, this side or this side? Right? You don't. You can't know. However, <laughs> the more that you activate your own personal azus, your own personal boldness, and the more that you connect your own body to your soul, the more you will be connected to the, to the true tzaddikim. And then you'll just know. You can't figure it out. You can't, you can't decide, I know which side is right. Right? You can't do it. 
I see this with my with my own eyes nowadays in a big way with insert with certain people. You can't do it. But he's telling us a tremendous yesoid, and it's the way it's the way a Jew should be. Um, I was told recently by someone uh, by uh, a Yerushalmi who comes from a, a Breslover who who has tremendous yichus. He's uh, he's a uh, a grandson. Uh, it's not. It's not Ramata, but he's also a grandson of Reb Shmuel Shapira, the 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 big tzaddik in in, in they used to call him the tzaddik in Yerushalayim, in, in Breslev, and, and he said the that that there's a derech in Breslev. Everybody knows that if you if you see that there's a that there's a machlekes, there's there's people are trying to tear down someone who who's like looks like a tzaddik, right? The one the one thing you don't do is go and talk to everybody about it. Right, because you're not going to figure it out. The derech is always to take your your issues, take your question, and it goes for every one of our personal issues. The 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 way they say it in Brazil is take it the the la viyoto la yar, take it to the forest, and go there, and daven to Hashem, and talk to Hashem, and cry and scream to, scream to Hashem. That's the only way that you'll really be able to to, to come to truth, right? This is what we're saying over here. You want to be connected to the right side, to the tzaddikim, and not to those who, from the sitra who are raising up against him. You got to go to the field in the forest, or in Canada when it's freezing cold outside, like right now, and we're expecting a big snowstorm tomorrow. So you go and find a closed room, <laughs> just a place you could be alone, and don't be bashful, and don't be shy, and yell out to Hashem. Who's going to help you? One second. Okay, I think maybe we will, we're going to hold it here. It's a little bit early. We're about five minutes earlier than usual, but there's a, the next, uh, there's a few longer steps here that we won't be able to finish today. So with that in mind, anybody have any additions, questions, comments? Yeah, Vered, what do you got? Princess, but in our own lives, you know, when we're talking about like personal development and the way we look at ourselves, every time we see some sort of growth and we make an effort and we achieve something, um, we get knocked down by external factors, right? And it's the same thing for when you get become successful. The more successful you are and the higher you rise, the more haters you have. Right. It's just the way it is. So we have to also remind ourselves that spiritually like you know with religion and, and observance and whatever but also in our personal lives not to let that knock us down right and just to take it as affirmation that we are achieving something right achieving something. ever hear that she's saying something very good she's she's uh i mean really i think it is actually the same thing but just in a but but she's saying Verit is saying that you see the more successful a person gets all of a sudden, there's an opportunity for there to be a lot more haters, a lot more people to stand up against that person, right? Nobody cared before, nobody, right? But as you, as you rise up, there, the negative force also rises up, right? And so she said a very, very important idea that we should, we should remember and to be conscious of it and to take it as a bit of an affirmation that really we're actually on our way up. We see this in, in Rabbi Nachman in so many ways, right? We're actually on the next level. No, it's not not that we fell down. We're actually on the next level. One of his famous things. Anybody else? No? Okay, everyone. Have a super duper awesome uh, week. And we'll see you guys next Monday and next Wednesday. Mir Tashem. Last, well, probably the last week before Hanukkah, I think. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All the best, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Bye. Okay. 55.